One day in August 1995, a man called Futanga Babani Susoko walked into the head office of the Dubai Islamic Bank and asked for a loan to buy a car. The manager agreed and Susoko invited him home for dinner. Over dinner, Susoko made a startling claim. He told the bank manager, Mohammed Ayub, that he had magic powers. With these powers, he could take a sum of money and double it. He invited his Emirati friend to come again and to bring some cash. Black magic is condemned by Islam as blasphemous. Even so, there's still a widespread belief in it and Ayub was taken in by the colorful and mysterious businessman from a remote village in Mali. When he arrived at Sasoka's house the next time, carrying his money, a man burst out of a room saying a spirit, a jinn, had just attacked him. He warned Ayub not to to anger the jinn for fear his money would not be doubled. So Ayub left his cars in the magic room and waited. He said he saw light and smoke. He heard the voices of spirits. Then there was silence. The money had indeed doubled. Ayub was delighted and the ace could begin. He believed it was black magic that Mr. Susoko could double the money, says Alan Fine. In Miami attorney, the bank later asked to investigate the crime. So he would send money to Mr. Sosoko, the bank's money, and he expected it to come back in double the amount. Between 1995 and 1998, Ayub made 183 transfers into Sosoko's account around the world. Sosoko was also running up big credit card bills in the millions according to fine, which Ayub would settle in his behalf. In 1998, I was living in Dubai and I heard rumors that the bank was in trouble. When a newspaper reported that the bank was having cash flow problems, crowds of people gathered outside waiting to withdraw their money. The Dubai authorities downplayed the crisis. They called it a little difficulty that did not lead to any financial losses, either in the bank's investment or depositors' account. But this wasn't true. The people who owned the bank took a huge, huge hit. It was not covered by insurance, says Fine. The bank was saved because the government stepped in to help, but they gave up a lot of their equity in the bag for that to happen. And where is Futanga Babanu Susoko? By this time, he was far away. One of the beauties of this scheme was that he did not need to be in Dubai to keep receiving the money. In November 1995, only weeks after putting on the magic display for Ayub, Susoko visited another bank in New York and did much more than open an account. He walked into Citibank one day, no appointment, met a teller, and he ended up marrying her, says Alan Fine. And there's reason to believe she made his relationship with Citibank more comfortable, and he ended up opening an account there, through which from memory, I'm just going to say, more than $100 million was wire transferred into the United States. In fact, according to a case brought by the Dubai Islamic Bank against Citibank, more than $151 million was debited by Citibank from DIBS correspondent account without proper authorization. The case was later dropped. Sissoko paid his new wife more than half a million dollars for her help. I don't know under what legal regime he married her, but he called her a wife and she believed she was a wife, says so fine. She understood that there were many other wives, some from her Africa, some from Miami, and some from New York. With the bank's money rolling in, Sissoko could fulfill his dream of opening an airline for West Africa. He bought a used Orca Sidley 125 and a pair of old Boeing 727S. This was the bed of Air Debia, named after his village in Mali. But in July 1996, Sissoko made a serious mistake as he tried to buy two Huey helicopters dating from the Vietnam War for reasons that remain unclear. His explanation of why he wanted them was emergency air ambulance, but the helicopters he was looking at were pretty big helicopters. They were not the kind that you see running back and forth to hospitals and trauma centers in the United States. They were more much more bigger than that, says Fine, because they could be refitted as gunships. The helicopters needed a special export license. 
Sissoko's men tried to speed things up by offering a $30,000 bribe to a customs officer. Instead, they got themselves arrested. An Interpol issued a warrant to Sissoko's arrest too. He was caught in Geneva, where he had gone to open another bank account. Tom Spencer, a Miami lawyer who was asked to represent Sissoko, vividly remembers going to meet him in Geneva's Cham Dolan prison. I talked with the prison warden who asked me whether or not Sissoko was going to go to the United States, says Spencer. I said, well, you know, we'll see. And he said, well, please delay it as long as possible. And I said, well, why? And he said, because he's flying in fantastic meals from Paris every night for us. And that was my first bizarre encounter with Babani Sosoko. Sosoko was quickly eradicated to the U.S., where he started to mobilize influential supporters. The readiness of diplomats to vouch for Sissoko shocked the judge proceeding over his bail hearing and Tom Spencer was stunned when a former U.S. Senator, Birch Bay, announced he was joining Sissoko's defense team. Well, you have to ask yourself, why would anyone get involved for a foreign national who has no apparent value in the United States? Says fine. I don't know the answer to the question, but it's an interesting one to pose. The U.S government wanted Sosoko held in custody, but he was bailed for $20 million, which is $14.5 million in Euro, a Florida record at that time. Then he went on a spending spree. His defense team was rewarded with Mercedes or Jaguar cars, but that was just the start. Sosoko spent half a million dollars in one jewelry store alone, Finn recalls, and hundreds of thousands in others. In one men's clothing store he spent more than one hundred and fifty thousand dollars he would come in and buy two three four cars at the same time come back another week and buy two three four cars at the same time it was just the money was like win says car dealer Ronald Dufferin he calculates that he sold Sissoko between 30 and 35 cars in total Sissoko became a Miami celebrity he already had several wives but that didn't stop him marrying more and housing them in some of the 23 apartments he rented in the city. Playboy is the right word to describe him because he is very elegant and handsome and he dresses with great style. He blew a lot of money in Miami, says Sissoko's cousin Makan Musa. Sissoko was also giving away large sums of good causes. His trial was approaching and he knew the value of good publicity. In one case witnessed by his cousin, he gave three hundred thousand euro which is four hundred and thirteen thousand in dollars to a high school band that needed money to travel to new york for a thanksgiving day parade another of his defense lawyers professor h.t smith remembers that on thursdays he would drive around giving money to homeless people i was thinking is this some modern day robin hood why would you steal money and give it away it doesn't make any sense he says the Miami Herald did a story just after he left and I think, I don't want to exaggerate, but I think they said they could chronicle like $14 million he gave away. He was only here 10 months. That's over a million dollars a month. Alan Fine took a slightly more cynical view. So much of what he did was for image and to perpetuate a belief that he was a very powerful man and fabulously wealthy. He would give away money but to my knowledge it was never done in a way that he didn't get publicity for. Despite this PR, when Sissoko's case came to court, he disregarded his lawyer's advice and pleaded guilty. Maybe he calculated that this would maybe he calculated that this would provoke fewer questions about his finances. The sentence was for three days in prison and a two hundred and fifty thousand dollars fine paid. Of course by the Dubai Islamic Bank, though without its knowledge, after serving only half this sentence. 
he was given early release in return for her one million dollar payment to a homeless shelter the rest was meant to serve as on the house arrest in mali instead he returned home to a hero's welcome it was around this time that the dubai islamic bank's auditors began to notice that something was wrong ayub was getting nervous and sissoko had stopped answering his calls finally he confessed to a colleague who asked how much was missing too ashamed to say ayub wrote it on the scrap of paper he wrote 890 million dirhams the equivalent of 242 million dollars which is 175 million in hero he was found guilty of fraud and given three years in jail. It's rumored he was also forced to undergo an exorcism to cure him of his belief in black magic. The Soko has never faced justice. In his absence, a Dubai court sentenced him to three years for fraud and practicing magic. Interpol issued an arrest warrant and he remains a wanted man. I found transcript from other trials as which the Soko failed to appear, including one in Paris. His lawyer claimed he was a scapegoat for Ayub's actions and the bank's money had gone elsewhere but the court didn't swallow it and convicted him of money laundering for 12 years between 2002 and 2014 Sissoko was a member of parliament in Mali which gave him immunity from persecution for the last four years no longer an MP he has been protected by the fact that Mali has no eradication treaty no longer an MP he has been protected by the fact that Mali has no extradition treaty with any other country the Dubai Islamic Bank nonetheless is still pursuing him through the courts I flew to Mali's capital Bamako to find people who might tell me about Sosoko I tracked down his seamstress who remembered him fondly the last time I saw him two or three years ago I made him a suitcase of clothes if it didn't give out present, he wasn't happy. It is style. He loves to give things to people, she said. I also found his driver, Lukali Ibrahim. The good thing about him is that when things are going well, you can expect a lot of presents from him. He likes to help people with their problems, he said. But the bad thing, I can tell you a few. This is someone who always gives advice to people and gives people hope. But instead, it just leads you on. In the market, I found a goldsmith who had only praise for a client who would call and ask him to make presents for his friends. I also heard that he could be found living near his native village, Dabia, which had given its name to Sissoko's short-lived airline near Mali's border with Guinea and Senegal. After a long drive, I found a house that fitted the description I had been given, suddenly surrounded by armed guards. There he was. Babani Susoko in person, now perhaps 70 years old. He agreed to an interview. The atmosphere was edgy and slightly surreal. He began by telling me about his entry into the world. My name is Susoko Fatanga Dit Babani. You know, the day I was born, all the villages round here burnt down. The villagers went round shouting, Marito had had a boy. The fire leaped and leaped. There used to be a lot of bush around. He then talked about his he then talked about his efforts to rebuild the village, which began in 1985, and about the money he made. At one point, he had been worth 400 million dollars. He said, eventually. I asked about the $242 million he had received from the Dubai Islamic Bank. Madam, this $242 million is slightly crazy story. The gentleman from the bank should explain how they lost all that money. I mean, the $242 million. Listen closely. How could that money have left the bank the way it did? That's the problem. It's not this man alone who authorizes the transfers. When the bank transfers money, it's not just one person who does it. Several people have to do it. I pointed out to him that Mohammed Ayub had claimed at his trial that Sosoko had put him under a spell. The gentleman you're talking about, I've seen him and met him, he said, but the haste, he denied.
The only contact I made with him was when I went to buy a car. The bank bought it for me and I repaid the loan, but it was a Japanese car. Are they controlled people by means of black magic? Madam, if a person had that kind of power, why would he walk? If you have that kind of power, you can stay here and anywhere you are, rob all the banks of the world in the United States, France, Germany, everywhere, and even here in Africa, you could rob all the banks you want. I asked him if he was still rich, but his answer was blunt. He said, no, I'm not rich any longer. I'm poor. Defying Interpol, Sissoko has spent a remarkable 20 years on the run, even if he has squandered all his money and can never leave Mali. He has never spent a day in jail for the black magic bank East.